now that we got part of the chamber with our uh, finger and rounded ball, we're going to go in here. I've switched to the giant flame and we're going to cut there to there. Let's see what we got. I'm going to give you a couple of angles. Notice I'm not going up in here. I'm keeping it right here. Then you kind of got to come over here and look between them and bounce them. Boy, that was close. Wow, what a difference that that right there just made. All right, let's get a close-up. Right, now, look how that the valve being close to the chamber is channeling itself off. It's kind of like making a swoop. And this won't be the only bird that I use because the problem is... It's like a little bit of a gully, not much, but I'll have to go back in lightly with a small egg and contour it. But now, look at what we got here. I'll try to... Will you ever drop a head on you, you'll sure know it. I've actually had that happen twice in my time. All right, now, look at the difference. Let me reposition camera. Look at the difference when we try to zoom in. Look at our gap right here. We really couldn't do nothing here. We'd already done that with the finger cutter. But right here, this is dramatic. That's really letting it come up because that chamber right there had a big hump that come up and it wouldn't let it exit out and kind of tumble right into the bore. So now we, we're using it... Um, We're getting the benefit here. Look at that. Unshrouded there. Some here and then right there. You know, I've been thinking while I'm doing this about going to a 1-9 bore valve. Let's take a look. at This is something I've just sit here and I'm seriously contemplating a change because I just did some math on this and... Huh, Boy, I hate this. Uh, Y'all, I'm real guilty of this. I'll get in there doing my stage four and doing it, and then something will just come over me where I see that I can make something better and a chance to, to kind of try to see when I know the math says it's going to be what it's supposed to be, and nine and a half times out of ten, I'm always right. And what I've seen is typically on the 305 head because of the thick chamber, I don't ever go to a 194. Now, this is a 1850 valve, and uh, if you take the feeler gauges and clearance it, 
It's 34 thousandths from the edge of the valve to the chamber wall. This is after I've done the porting, of course, mainly in this area right here. Okay, now, um, when I measured it over here with a 194, excuse me, the, the 194 was 34 thousandths and the 1850 is 79 thousandths. So it's twice the air gap between it. All right. Now let's take a look at this. This is the 194. And I believe from this right here, you might just get the picture I'm trying to show you. Now, see that? I'm going to try to even it. Alright, look how right here, this is the danger zone, but only here. Back here, I've opened it up, and then, now right now, this is a chamber that I haven't done the mod on it. Now look how much gap there is right here. This is with the chamber mod done on this one, without the chamber long cut on this one. But, let's reverse them a minute and take a look at this. Now take the 194 and put it on the chamber that I've cut out. Look at this business, guys. Look how much more air, because I moved that chamber. The only danger zone in using the 194 starts about right here and goes to here. That little space. Yes, I know I'm going to lose some CFMs. But look over here in the center part of the bore where it's unshrouded. I'm going to gain from here all the way to here. Since the cam is 510, 520 lift, I fully believe that losing this little bitty bit right here is going to be way more offset by the amount that I'm going to gain right here in this situation with the 305. I'm going to have to go ahead and do the chambers and finish up what I'm doing. I'm going to have to talk to Holder Boulder, the customer that owns this, and try to explain to him and give him the option of going to the 194 or staying with the 1850 type valve. But anyway, these are the kind of things, deciding factors, but look how much there. Now let's put the 1850 over here. Remember, this is the stock combustion chamber uncut. This is the 194 in a cut chamber. Notice that I've got... Watch my, watch my uh, scribe. Watch my scribe. Wow, I'm getting more airflow with the 194 from here. I can't even get it up but to there. Look at that, guys. So, man, this changes everything. I'm dying because, see, this is, I haven't done a stage four all-out 305 with welded crossover in a long time. And this is a chance to show y'all. But you see the debate. Look at, I'm only hurting in one spot. Granted, that's low lift flow and tube area, but look at, Lord, have mercy. All right, I'm going to go back in here, recut the chambers all, max them out, because I'll use that even with a 194, I mean with a 1850, and then let the customer decide if he wants to try this 194 valve. I'm very enthused about this, but that's the difference. Now let's take it out, and you can see, with the chamber mod cut, let me see, a little bit better with the chamber mod cut. Now look what happens if you put a 194 in and don't cut the chamber. You're losing all the way. Look at, oh my God. That's why guys, you don't put 194 valves in 305 heads. Yeah, you can do it, but look what you do. You're losing from here all the way to here. Well, wait a minute. You know what? Probably more because remember with my finger cutter, with the uh, this finger cutter ball, I had went in there already and moved a lot. I'd imagine on the stock chamber it'd probably be up. So by putting a 194 valve in, you're losing damn near half of the valve. At least a third, between a third and a half of the valve that you will not pass no air in. Whereas if you stay with the stock 1850 valve, okay, 
you're getting the air in all the way around. Sure, not as much as here. But the point is, sometimes going to the bigger valves hurts you. In this case, I know for a fact that the 194 valve would kill this head had it not been for totally dicing the chambers and the tubes and all the bow work that I've done, especially cutting all this out back here. All right, so... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish all the chamber work up, and then we're going to do a valve guide mod. We're going to chop the guide area, do the bullet nose thing, reshape all that to complement the tubes and the entrances that I've done. All right.